So, what's about the first presentation? Um, well, uh, Ali are part of a team of librarians at the, the Center of Astro, Astrophysics actually. Uh, they're passionate about uh, public science education. Uh, you can call them as they. And uh, they will be talking about Metasat, which is an uh, open, collaboratively developed uh, metadata tools uh, to support uh, the future of space exploration. And uh, they got the mic. Thank you so much. Should I wait a minute to get right to 810? Let's start. <laughs> All right, I'm going to wait the 30 seconds until we're actually at 810, just in case. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, I've got to get myself in the middle of this. Okay. All right, everyone. Good morning. It's morning for me anyway. I don't. I know it's not for everyone, but good morning uh, from Massachusetts. Um, I'm Ali. I'm going to be talking to you guys today about Metasat, which is our project for making metadata for small satellite missions. Uh, this was introduced at OSCW last year, um, but I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of an update to let you guys know what we've done for the past year. Um, before we do that, though, I want to kind of introduce myself, introduce who we are and why we're working on this. So I'm part of a group of librarians at the Center for Astrophysics here at Cambridge, Massachusetts. We work for the Wolbach Library, which serves the CFA, and we're the largest astrophysics research library in the world. So part of our mission as a library is to anticipate the challenges that impact the astrophysics community, both at the CFA and as a whole, I think. What this means is that we need to stay on top of trends not only in libraries, but also in astrophysics. And really where those two things overlap, in my opinion, is in helping kind of the scientists at the CFA work with uh, better communication and collaboration. Because we know that there are a lot of teams at the CFA, there are a lot of teams in general in satellite missions um, that, that work with other people all over the world, right? Um, we have teams here at the CFA who are working with uh, some of the NASA labs in California, with the Naval Research Lab in Bethesda, with other people all over the world. Um, so we wanna kind of help them be able to communicate effectively. And we know that there have been um, a lot of issues with people when, when they're only able to kind of talk to each other remotely. I think that we've all seen that recently since we're all kind of working remotely with each other more than ever now. Um, but we, but we do know that, that we often see some difficulties. So one example here is that there was a student team at New Mexico State University that was working on a CubeSat called Inca with some of the scientists at NASA Goddard. The scientists at NASA were building a part for the team at NMSU. But when the students at New, in New Mexico got the part, they found that it was actually a millimeter too big in every direction and did not fit in their CubeSat, right? Um, so they had to send it back and have it completely remade, and that costs a lot of time, it costs a lot of money, they almost missed their launch, they're very lucky that they didn't. Um, and so just a, a tiny little miscommunication like that can kind of cause this ripple effect. I mean, we all know that if we've worked on satellites, right? There are some issues that we can anticipate that we know happen a lot. So for example, when we have teams in the United States working with teams elsewhere, we, have, we might have people using different units because the United States will not use metric. Uh, we spell things differently. You might have different terms and variable names for the same thing. I mean, I have tutored students in physics before and I have to tell them, you need to tell me what that variable is because I might have learned something completely different, right? And these aren't kind of trivial issues. These can, can cause really big problems. So one of the more famous examples is that in the 90s, NASA launched the Mars, Mars Climate Orbiter. They were working on this satellite with Lockheed Martin. And Lockheed Martin had written software for the satellite that used metric units, like Newton seconds. 
But NASA software on Earth was using imperial units, so pounds for seconds. The satellite didn't know that. It didn't have any way to convert between the two. And so what happened is when they tried to establish orbit around Mars, it ended up crashing into the planet because it was given the wrong measurements. Um, so this isn't trivial. These are, these are kind of a, these can cause really big problems that cost a lot of time, that cost a lot of money, and they weren't able to get the data out of that they wanted to. So what we want to do is we want to at least do our small part in making sure that these kind of mistakes don't happen, or at least they happen less often, right? So that's where we come in. We're working on Metasat, which is our linked data vocabulary of satellite terms. We're trying to make a list of linked data URIs that cover kind of all parts of the satellite mission. We have information about the mission and people, so who's putting the satellite up and why the launch, when did it get into space and from where. And ground stations, the data, how are we talking to the satellite and what are we pulling down from it? The hardware, the software, what is the satellite made of? What are maybe some off the shelf parts that we could use if we're making a satellite later? Because this is a linked data vocabulary, it can be used with any other linked data vocabulary like schema.org, and this makes it really flexible and extensible. And if you're not familiar with linked data, the W3C describes this as a collection of interrelated data sets on the web. What this does is it kind of makes data a little bit easier for machines to access, and um, as well as for data sets to kind of talk to each other, if that makes sense. So over the past year, we kind of um, had, a, had a few big things that we've done. So we have kind of three major parts of Metasat that we've worked on. We have our vocabulary of concepts. I wrote here that we have about a thousand concepts. It's more like 1500 um, that relate again to all parts of the satellite mission. These aren't hierarchical. You can use them in any relationship that you want. We do have them grouped on our website by segments. So like launch segment, space segment, uh, ground segment, as well as different concept types. And I'll give you some examples of those uh, in a little bit. We also have a set of metadata crosswalks. These are tools that we can use to kind of match concepts between vocabularies. So if there are other linked data vocabularies, uh, dictionaries, we have multilingual dictionaries, for example, um, as well as other databases, we can link uh, between our terms and terms that other people are using. And finally, we also have a collection of JSON-LD example files. You can use linked data in a lot of different formats. We're recommending JSON-LD specifically because it's really easy to write, it's easy for machines to read, and it's very flexible. So what we've done is we have a set of files about real missions that are written in JSON-LD to kind of inspire you guys to see what you can do with Metasat. So here's an example of a file that we made for a mission called Picard. So you can see that this is set up a lot like plain JSON. We have our keys and our values, our key value pairs. What makes this special is this context section up at the top. Um, you'll see that we have this line that the vocabulary is schema.space slash metasat. That's where all of our terms live. And so what happens is that if you have something like mission, that gets expanded into schema.space slash metasat slash mission, which is our concept for that. And you can see that on this file, we have um, just like a lot of information about this, what this is. So we can see that this is a solar science mission named Picard that's coming out of France. We have information about when it was launched and from where. We have information about the spacecraft itself. We have its Coast Bar ID over here. We have its NORAD ID um, and more information as we keep going. So. At the same time, this is just one example of how you can use Metasat and JSON-LD to describe this mission. There are other things that you can do that's, it's, we try to be very flexible and we, again, these are just to inspire you to what you could do. We also have our website is live, that's schema.space. Um, we have all of our concepts living there. Um, if you go to schema.space slash Metasat is where those are. Um, and then after that is where the actual term lives. So here is an example of what these pages look like. So this is the page for FPGA, the Field Programmable Gate Array. At the top of each of these, we have the term itself. Underneath, we have the permanent URI to that term. And then we have a description. We always have a definition for what it is. Underneath, we have examples and synonyms. Not everything has an example or synonym, but some do. And we do have the website set up so that if you search for a synonym, but we use a different term, you should still be able to find it by the synonyms. And then down here at the bottom, we have the segments and families. Um, so this one is part of both the space segment and the ground segment because your FPGA can be part of either your ground station or your satellite, as well as these families, which are kind of 
things that we put together by what we felt were similarities. So here it can be part of both communications and computer hardware. We have other ones as well, like orbital mechanics, mission data, um, all sorts of different things. Crucially, at the bottom of each of these pages, we also have this suggest and edit button. Um, we really do value everyone's feedback. If there's any um, way that you would change any of these, you can always click on this. Right now it's a mail to link. It might become a form in the future, but we always look forward to your feedback to us. The other thing that's on our website is that we have a resources tab up on the top that includes guides for people. So we're anticipating that people using Metasat will probably be familiar with satellites and space research, but they might not be as familiar with databases, metadata, RDF, that kind of thing, JSON-LD. So we have a set of guides that we hope that you guys will find helpful. And finally, we have our first implementation of Metasat, which we're all very excited for. So yesterday at the SatMogs update, Freddie mentioned that Metasat is being used with the SatMogs API. Um, so this is kind of what that looks like. This is a screenshot from the Satellite List API. And you'll see up at the top, we have this context section that links to our Metasat vocabulary. Um, so if you ask for the, the API specifically to give you JSON-LD, that's what you'll see is it links to our Metasat concepts. There are also other people that we're working with too. So for example, we're working with Jonathan McDowell here at the CFA. You might be familiar with Jonathan's space report and GCAT, the general catalog of artificial space objects. He gets a lot of really good data about satellites, but it's, and it's all public, but it's kind of hard to use sometimes. You can get it as a text or a TSV file. So we worked with him to actually crosswalk his terms to Metasat. Um, so, so we're hoping that we can make those a little bit more easily available by, by using it with Metasat. We also have a pending agreement with NASA. We want to work with them on their Small Spacecraft Systems Virtual Institute. They have a database called Spoon, Small Set Parts on Orbit Now. We're hoping to, again, crosswalk their terms to Metasat to make it a little bit more easy to use. And we've also had interest expressed by other potential early adopters as well. The reason that this is important, that we want so many people using this, is that one of the potential applications in the future is that you could have a federated search which is where you have one search application that pulls from a bunch of different databases. So you could potentially search for a satellite and you could get all of uh, Jonathan McDowell's really detailed information as well as the SatMogs information about the transmitters and the spoon information about what kind of hardware is on it. So you get like a really complete picture of that satellite and what it's doing. A little bit about what our next steps are going to be. We have our official 1.0 release is going to be just around the corner, which we're all really excited about. We're also going to make an RDF implementation of Metasat. That might be jargon for you. What that really means is that that will make it real linked data and makes it easier for machines and APIs to use. And we're also incorporating into Wikidata, which we're really stoked about. Um, so we have a Wikidata item for Metasat as well as a Wikidata property. What that means is that we can start putting Metasat terms into Wikidata. Um, once they're there, we can use them to describe satellites on Wikipedia, and that might make them more easily Googleable in the future. And finally, if you guys want to contribute, obviously this is all open and we're really looking forward to what we hear from different people in the satellite community. We do have a GitLab repository that you can always leave an issue on. You can email us. Our team is at metasatitsteam.space. You can email me directly if there's anything in this presentation that you find interesting. Um, in addition to giving us suggestions, you can also always ask for clarifications. Let us know what kind of topics are unclear because we are writing guides that we hope will help you guys. So with that, thank you, and I am excited to take your questions. Awesome. Uh, please, do, people, don't hesitate to come over and uh, ask your questions. Uh, you can also uh, use a uh, chat, uh, or you can use uh, our uh, matrix channels. Wow. Uh, OK. Um, will I upload my slides? I do want to upload my slides. Um, if someone would help me do that, I would love it. <laughs> yeah, we will. We will upload them. Uh, okay. I look over. I got one um, question. So, uh, as as a guy working on the Polaris project, so the machine learning uh, analysis for spacecraft, so we have a great deal of use for for you know metadata because we would like to learn what the temperature is reacting to, and then we want to see on other spacecraft if other temperature sensors are reacting the same. But 
for that, mm -hmm. we need some kind of a federated search, you know, like to be able to to go to other spacecraft and take those temperatures and just right. uh, just by by semantics, you know, like we want temperature parameters. That's what we, we that's how we want to search. The do, uh, for for that to happen, do do you have uh, missions that are already uh, using Metasat? Uh, uh, how do you see that multiplying? You know, people onboarding with with metadata mm -hmm. uh, schemas. We don't, as far as I know, have any particular missions that are using Metasat yet. Um, right now, the scope of Metasat is more to describe the satellite mission kind of as a whole, so what the satellite is and what it's doing. Um, having it actually have metadata for the data itself is definitely kind of a, I think, kind of a future, uh, something that we want to, yeah, have, have in the future more. OK, then, okay. then may, we might come in and I contribute for that then. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Uh, awesome. I actually do have a question. Um, well, uh, as far as I understand, uh, uh, space technologies are um, changing in a, a very fast uh, pace. And um, does uh, Metasat uh, have that? Uh, into mind when it was designed, so in order to be future-proof, if you like? Yeah, so Metasat is very extensible. Um, right now, the way that it works is all of our terms are, they have permanent URIs, right? And we know that those, those terms might change in the future, or they might have technologies that exist in the future that don't exist right now, for example. Um, we will never delete any of our URIs, we might deprecate them, if that makes sense. So, so any update to Metasat should not break any applications that you make. But we are working on one of the things that we want to have ready with our 1.0 release is kind of a versioning schedule so that we can kind of regularly make sure to solicit feedback uh, from the satellite community, figure out what, what do you guys need? What are we missing? What can we add? Um, what can be deprecated? So, so we're hoping that it will continue to change and evolve as uh, the field does. Yes. Awesome. Uh, also, um, for those that don't read uh, the chat, um, Dana from the Metasat team uh, has said that uh, they are just getting started with uh, specific missions adapting, and they're still developing uh, tooling to make it easier for individual missions. So we look up to that too. Awesome, that was uh, really cool. Uh, any other questions? Let me see. I don't think there are any other. Um, so people stick around and we're gonna go to the next uh, presentation. <laughs>